I'm going to give somebody opportunity to testify. I will make sure as much as possible that I will not interrupt his testimony and ask him to go fast and pray. So that God will put words in his mouth that will minister to you. So today, that will be repeated in the next service before I say anything in terms of preaching. Please pay attention to what he will say. Because what you will hear will be the purpose of this call. Will be the working of the purpose of this call. It will be how you judge your life after some years. It will be how I will be judged when I meet God in eternity. Did I inspire people in this direction? Welcome, one of my sons. He had done his testimony before. He had testified, but he came to my office on Tuesday. There is another level in his life. I said, ah, it's sweet. Come, let's talk about it. So you go through the testimony all over. You are a minister today. I told you that this is not vanity. You are going to minister to people. So you don't waste what You say what matters at points of your life and where you are right now. I see him in the future. And after that today, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. After service, before you leave this compound, you're going to stay for two services, right? Good morning, family. My name is Emmanuelene. Um, I am so excited to share this testimony with all of us because this testimony defines what God is doing in my life. Father, I want to first of all appreciate you for answering God's call. Father, I want to appreciate you for answering God's call in your life because some of us, is through your light, we could see our own light. Um, I grew up as a boy who, who saw so many challenges relating to family, to life, to everything. Like, in fact, growing up was very difficult because as a boy, I didn't really know where we were going, all right? So issues of debt, issues of, you know, financial struggle in the family really made me to begin to wonder, if this was the whole essence of life, then why should I be born in this family? Growing up, I've lost five siblings, five siblings intermittently within certain periods of my life. And those five siblings really shaped my thinking and my mindset prior to when I met God's servant. Now, there are certain things that happens in our life and we don't really know what God is trying to say. As I was with my dad and my mom growing up in Ibionibom where he was serving as a civil servant, coaching officer, anytime God's servant wanted to minister in music on AKBC, my dad would always call me, you know, come, your, your, your mentor is singing, you know. So I would always come sit in front of the TV. I don't know your first album, but one of my best music those moments, I can't forget it, is Our Father Who Has in Heaven. Hallelujah. So anytime you sing, I will just come sit down there, join you in singing, and thereafter I go back to what I was doing. So I didn't really know that God was, you know, preparing my spirit for what was coming ahead. So as the challenges grew, I think 2009 was when we, we lost the, another of my siblings. I think that was the fourth one. Now, after we lost her, my family broke apart. My mom took me, took the, the remaining four siblings of mine at that time, and we left. We left my dad, and my dad was left alone. Like, that was the most terrible period of my dad's life. Now, the issue was that my mom had accused my dad that it was the reason why we were facing all of the challenges we were having in the family. And one of the instructions my mom gave me was that I should never go back to stay with my father. So I had difficulty, you know, living with this kind of, you know, situation and also trying to grow. So everything that was happening in my life, you know, coupled together, did not really have a space. You could not really say, this is where I'm going. Like, my life didn't have meaning at that point because so many things were happening at the time. My dad tried to, you know, bring back his family together. It was really, really difficult. Really difficult for him. He met the, then we were in deeper life. He met the state of Asia, then spoke to the state of Asia, called my mom several times, but all 
to no avail. Now, it got worse when my, the last of my siblings died, like this, the, the last of the five that died, died in 2013. Now, when that one died in 2013, there was no way. I just knew there was no hope, you know, of mending my family. But then I didn't know what to do as a boy, you know, when I've not really met Christ. I didn't really understand Jesus as I understand him today. And that was a very crazy moment for me. Fast forward to 2014, when my dad died in a ghastly motor accident coming back from a promotion interview. That was when my mom knew that... My dad was not the cost of all the crises in our family. So she came to science school where I was as a boarding student. She came to see me. I was deeply hot, badly hot. So I told her to go. Because all along, you've always told me that my dad was the reason why we're facing this great challenge. But today, I'm seeing that this was a man who didn't know what to do, but was just moving with life, who didn't really have direction of where to go in order to solve his problem. Now, I had to carry that problem on my head. You see how difficult it was for me. I knew that from then, I was now the one in charge. Like, I, I, the mantle has been passed to me. Now, how do I save my family was, was now the, the headache I was having. That was where fear crept me. I told God's servant when I met him in the office that God delivered me from fear. Fear crept me heavily. I was always thinking who is the next person that is going to die. I live like that every single day. I don't, have, I don't have peace of mind. In fact, if my mom takes long to come back, the next thing that comes to my mind is something bad has happened to her. It was so difficult. I don't know, some of us probably must have been in that position before. But that was the kind of life I was living daily. Now, I remember when my dad passed on, one of the things that I said, and my vice principal in school that rebuked me was, my life was built around this man. So that means him passing, my life is useless. There is no hope for me. Who is going to send me to school and all of that? But the woman rebuked me. But then, even when she rebuked me, I still had this thing in me that told me there is no way, there is no saving for you. Why? My dad didn't have a sibling. He didn't have anybody at all that I could run to and say, ah, at this point. In fact, I remember one of his best friends then, I went to him to ask him to help me relate, relating to how I can go about pursuing his, um, his gratuity and all of that. The man told me what really pained me. He told me, Emmanuel, your dad is gone. This is you right now. I don't know. The best I can tell you right now is go out there, look for what you can do to help yourself. He went inside, brought a clean note of 100, 100 Naira, five. That was 500, and gave it to me. I cried bitterly that day as I was leaving his house. This was his best friend, and he was not ready to help me at all. That was when I knew that the only person that could help me is God. But then I didn't know how to assess this help. So I have lived with this thought in mind. Fast forward to 215 when we buried him eventually. 216, my life didn't still have a clear navigation where I was going. God was 216, we didn't have a place to stay again. In fact, we, we had to come and rent a little place that looks like a shop in Ibesik Bosut and Ikorok Paito. We left around. We didn't have a place to stay. As a matter of fact, the house my dad was trying to complete is still uncompleted till today. So we didn't have a place to stay at all. So my mom brought us. We stayed in that shop. Myself and my two other siblings, plus our four of us, in that place, that small confinement. And every day I will wake up not knowing what to do that day. So I would always wake up every day. I didn't have plans for the day. And I would just sit there. I was asking myself, what kind of life is this? I stopped going to church because it was not making sense to me anymore. But one day, as I was just there, I was just trying to listen to the radio because that became my best companion. I listened to several programs a day. That was when I caught God's servant preaching on Planet FM. And that is the scripture that defines everything I'm going to say today, Joshua chapter 6, Judges chapter 6, which talks about the story of Gideon. Gideon's story actually paints the picture of who God is making out of me because there was no hope at all for me. Like, I, I didn't see anything positive from moving 
from a boy who was facing trauma of losing the siblings, of losing the siblings and the trauma of not having a father plus the trauma of the mother not being to even help him so there was there was no clear picture of where I was going now this scripture when God's servant was preaching that day I still remember the high point of that scripture after preaching after saying a whole lot about Gideon and the mandate that Gideon accepted to lead the children you know of Israel one of the high points was that he said that one of his greatest desire is to see God raise champion. See God raise champion. At least one champion from a family. I said that was me. That I'm going to give myself that God should make me the champion of this family. I didn't know what that means. But I accepted that I wanted to be the champion in my family. It is now that I'm seeing the clear picture what God's servant was trying to say that day. This, yes, yes, this was 2000, either 2016 or 2017 where you ministered this. Now, after I accepted that, so many things happened. I got a little thing I was doing at the Peak Plaza. I didn't know that God was taking me to where the new chapter of my life was going to break out. It was in that Epic Plaza I met one of my friends that has left school for a long time. We were colleagues in Methodist Senior Science College or on. So he told me, what are you doing? Why have you not applied for school and all of that? I told him, I don't have anybody that will sponsor me. He just told me apply. I have worked in this place for almost two months. And the woman didn't pay me. I don't know why I was still there. But the moment I met this young man, somehow, somehow, I got funds. I got finance of buying the jam form. I bought the jam form. I started studying. This is me that left school 2015. 2017, I am trying to study to write jam in 218 without having a direct tutor. I can tell you, as I was reading, it was looking as though someone was teaching me. That was how it was until I got very, very prepared for the exam, went in, wrote the exam, did very well, and then I knew instantly that I was going to school. But the problem was, how am I going to go to this school? But because of the fact that God's servant has said that he is looking for a way to raise a champion in his family. I have always lived with that consciousness that from henceforth I'm the champion in this family. It means that if I fail, every other person after me definitely have to fail. So it was either I win or I win. There was, there was no room for me to even fail. So I took that courage upon myself. I told my mom, I'm going to Calabar. I didn't really have anybody. I'm going to go meet in Calabar. Why I left Uyo was because I felt Uyo was my comfort zone. I should go to a place I would challenge myself so that I can gather things to come and start school. When I got to Calabar, God so blessed, I met my cousins I've known for a long time, not like cousin because my dad didn't have a sister, so I used to call him my cousin. So he allowed me to stay in this place. That was where I stayed. I got a petty thing I was trying to do, and God helped me. I was able to save some money. I have never, in the course of all of this, dreamed or desired to meet God's servant. The only thing that has been driving me is the word that came out of his mouth. And I was okay with that. So while I was in Calabar, I was always making sure that I connect to Planet FM to always hear his message. And if I cannot connect, I will go on Facebook, you know, to browse things about what is happening in the ministry. Now, that was how I was going. I had a ministry, I connect, I had, I'd be worshiping with physically, but my spirit, soul, and body was connected to God's servant. So I was there, God favored me so well. I was able to gather a little money, though it was not enough, but to start school. I came back home, started, I think, first semester. The money was not even enough to take me through first semester, but I was trusting God because I knew that he has made me the champion in my home. So I was living with that consciousness. So whether challenges or no challenges, I was ready to face whatsoever would come out of it. So a couple of times I would go to school, you know, not having transport to come home, not having enough money to come home. I would have to trek some certain distances. I, I remember I spoke about this the last time. There were even some times when I want to attend dinner for champion in IBB, I would have to trek my way um, from, from, from permanent site to plaza so that the money would be enough for me to pay to Grace Family, after paying to Grace Family, I can now pay from Grace Family to North where we were staying. That was sometimes the routine. Or sometimes I would have to pay my way from Plaza to from Pemside to Plaza, pay my way to church. After the church, I would have to trek from the church home. Like, I, I didn't always like missing dinner for champion at all. So in the, in the course of me always making sure I attend dinner for champion, I faced one 
big challenge academically as I was going to school. Now, I wasn't really, really a bright student. I wasn't really a bright student, but God was trying to make a story out of this whole situation. So I met someone who was able to put me through at the early stage. I told God's servant how I had thought of leaving chemical engineering because it was, it was something that I didn't really find it very easy. At some point, I had to ask myself, what am I really doing in chemical engineering? Is, it that, is this what God really wanted me to do? But to prove that God wanted me to do chemical engineering, God sent me someone who took it upon herself to make sure that I was understanding every bit of thing that was being taught. So after each classes, I would go to the library. She would put me through. I would understand the concept. I go home. I practice it. That was how, over time, I began to understand the concept, the basic concept of chemical engineering, and I had a solid foundation afterward. But in... After the exam first semester, I had a challenge. In one of my results, I was given an F grade. And if I had had that F grade, this testimony today would not make sense. Now, I went to dinner, of champion, to dinner for champion that day with a heavy burden. Because I have gone several times to meet the HOD of physics. I had this issue in physics to rectify the issue. But they told me there is no way that issue can be rectified. And they even point out a situation where it has happened like that before. And they were not able to sort it out. So when I came for dinner of champion that day, I was just there. I was so disturbed. But I knew that there was a word that God is going to give me in that survey. I didn't know what the word is going to be. Now, God's servant was preaching about the story of the prodigal son and the brother. And how the prodigal son, after coming back to meet the father, the brother, the elder brother was very angry. Now, the whole story there was that the brother had a he goat mentality. Why would you think of a goat when your father can give you anything you want, when everything that your father has is actually your own? That understanding shifted everything about me that moment. And I was like, by the time I go to school tomorrow, this issue, this is the last time I'm going to go there and this issue is going to be rectified. Believe you me, when I got there, the first person I met in the department was the Yoshodi. And I have not spoken to him. Immediately I saw him, he was like, I've been looking for you, where are you? He called me. And then when he called me, he asked me the issue again. I told him that I have um, an F grade in my, in my physics. He was like trying to ask me what happened. So as I was even trying to explain, he said they should bring the, the score sheet for him. He now saw that I was not graded in my test, but I had a score for the exam. So he told me, what do you now want me to do? I told him that I wrote the test. He said, but you don't have evidence that you wrote the test. I said, I can prove. He, he, he now told me, we have some scripts here, but names were not written on it. So how do we know the one that belongs to you to know that it is actually you that wrote it? I said, my handwriting. He said he has never done something like that. How is he going to use my handwriting to ident identify my script? But just as you go, that he's going to look into it. He gave the script to the exam officer. They, they both say what they wanted to say. I didn't know what they wanted to say. But when I went back again, the lady told me, I shouldn't worry that that has been handled. So I had this internal peace that indeed is at the behind you. But one of the things I didn't want to see, because I did so well in the exam, so I didn't want to see a B grade at all. So I was just talking to God and saying, what if they give me zero in the, in the test, just so that I will have a score for the exam? I said, no, that God has warned me that I should not have a good mentality. So I'm going to have the A grade. So I wrote it. I used to write down, till now I still have it on my job. I used to write down my grades before the end of every semester. I would write down what I want to have. So I wrote it down that I wanted to have an A. All right? So after one week, I checked my portal. Miraculously, an A grade was recorded for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was when I knew that God is in a real business with my destiny. So I took more courage. I went on. I studied so hard. But in 200 level, I think that was during lockdown, things really, really became very, very tough. In fact, if you see what my mom was doing, to be giving me transport, to be going to school, you weep. But that was what was bringing the money. But during lockdown, everywhere was shut. Like, she could no longer do those things. And I was like, God, if you are the one that wants me to go to this school, another way will break forth. So I was still trusting him, still trusting him. During the period, there was several kind of scholarship that came up. So I started applying during those lockdown period. So as I was applying, I was studying as well. Miraculously, after the lockdown, I was called for one of the interviews and we did the interview and that was it. I never heard from them again. 
had probably forgotten about it. Fast forward to 2021. I remember how I paid my school fee that 200 level. My mom had to go to meet a certain pastor to be able to get money to pay my fees. But I told her this will be the last time you are going to get money to pay my fees. That for men's food, I'll be paying my fee. I know to her, she didn't really understood what I was trying to say. But fast forward to 2021, the scholarship that had called me, that I've done interview with, had to now call me. They told me that they've been trying to reach me, but they don't know what happened, that I should send my details. That was how they sent in my complete school fees for 200 and 300 level. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now after, after then, after then, I applied for MTN Foundation Scholarship. This particular testimony, I wish I was able to attend the, um, the award night in, um, in Anambra. I would be so happy because I know there are a couple of people that would have loved to hear something like this. Now, I applied for that scholarship, for that MTN scholarship, and after then, they started contacting my colleagues for interview. I wasn't contacted. So I had thought that I have lost the scholarship. All along, they were submitting their documents, their paper for verification and authentication. They don't wanted to know that whatsoever information you provided during the application were true. But all along, nobody contacted me. I wasn't contacted during this process. So automatically, you will feel that probably you were not qualified to move to the next stage. So I have erased that thought in my, in my mind that I was going to get the scholarship. Fast forward to, after like three months, they've done several verifications, including the one where you have to meet your HOD to confirm your CGPA. They've done so many documentation. But I was not part of the process. Now, one of the most, one of the greatest things that baffled me in all of this is that the number I use to register for this scholarship, somehow, somehow, I have misplaced it. Now, I don't know whether that was the reason because they were not using the number to communicate with these people. They were using their email to communicate with them, to ask them to provide this, to get this from, from this person, to get this from this person. So since I didn't get it from my email, I had felt that I'm not you know, qualified. I'm not qualified to move to this stage because it's in stages. You have the application stage, the verification stage, and the stage where you have to write the exam, and then eventually the award. Now, getting to the exam stage, my colleagues were just talking about it. So one of those days, I just saw a, a strange number called my new line, which I didn't use to apply for the scholarship. So I really hesitated to pick because it's a strange number, so I didn't want to pick. So I allowed it to ring. After the second, after the second time, I was like, ah-ah. Uh -uh. The third time, I had to now pick the call. Now when I picked, it was the MTN customer service. They were trying to reach out to me. I don't know what they used to know that I was the owner of the number. So they said they've been trying to reach out to me to submit my document, but that's notwithstanding. I should provide them with a valid email address so that they could, they could send me the exam link. By the way, the exam link for the scholarship was tomorrow. Something they have sent other people like probably two weeks before then. I was just being informed a day before the exam. I was like, something in me just told me, the fact that they even look for this number to call you means you are overly qualified for the scholarship. That was just the belief I had in my mind. So I didn't really care much about preparing intensively to write the exam. So I just went in, I did what I could do, and miraculously, without submitting any documentation, no CGPA confirmed, nothing, nothing, I was the very first that was awarded that scholarship. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was one of the defining moments of my life. Hallelujah. Another de defining moment of my life has to do with, during the lockdown, I had a couple of friends that, used, that I used to study with. Now, I told God, servant, one of the ways to know that something, a grace is working in your life is when it can actually be transferred. Like, you could see it, you could tell another person, and the person applied the same principle you use and it worked for that person. So we used to study together. By the way, this guy, I don't know how to call him, um, he's a pessimist. He doesn't believe that positive things could happen. So when I speak that way, it was always very strange to him. I told him you could have good grades, you could get scholarship, it's possible. He said, he said you need connection. I said you don't need any connection. The greatest connection you need is God. So I would always tell him these things 
whether he wants to accept it or not, I kept saying it to him every time we met and we studied. You know, one of the biggest, to me, is the biggest test, is one of the biggest testimony I've witnessed from a very close person. Gradually, this guy who could actually find, who could not really comprehend mathematics concept, because by the time if you are doing engineering, one of the things you have to be very good at is understanding mathematics. We are just basically applying mathematics. So if you cannot even understand the concept, you, you cannot talk about applying it. So you always find it difficult to actually understand the basic concept which he needs to apply. So all of the pro all through this process, we always give him assignment. I didn't know how he's going to go and you know study it and understand what I'm doing, but I will give him telling when you go. Stay with it, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you, and over time you are going to understand the concept. That was what we would do. So when we come, I will explain to him, but I know that it's very, very difficult. He, he might not really fix it, but I will always tell him, go back home, look at it again and again. After some time, this gentleman started attempting tough exercises after learning the ones I've given to him. So he will bring it to me, he said, I solved this problem. I knew something had started happening to him. So, so I was like, wow. So I gave him even more difficult ones. Even the ones I find it very challenging to do. I have not been able to solve it yet. I will carry it and I will give it to him. He will go me, battle with him. But after some days, he will tell me, he will call me that he has done it. Like we should meet. I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. Now, one of the, one of the high points of that testimony was in 200 level, 200 level in engineering is seen as one of the most difficult level. Because we do a lot of courses, we do up to like 13 courses in engineering, and doing 13 courses under three months. Ah, if you can even see six A's, it means you are very, very good. Now, this gentleman and myself, we came back after the lockdown, we came back, we, we did intensive study. The miracle is that I had 11 A's and two B's, but the gentleman had 12 A's and one B. And he shifted from just being someone who was battling, who was, who's aim and go. He always tell me, I just want four points. That was what he used to tell me. He said, I just want four points. I don't need the first class. Just give me my own. Is you, when you are getting the A, let me just be getting the B. His mindset instantly shifted from looking for a B to aiming for the best every time. That was one of the biggest story or biggest testimony I will hear from a very close person. Now, another of his challenges was he never believed there could be opportunity where he would get scholarship, apply for a scholarship and get it. So I told him that I'm going to share links just as I'm going to apply for those scholarship. I will also share the link to you. You will apply. She you are saying that you need someone to get you the, you need to be connected to someone to get you the scholarship, right? He said, yes, that he still maintained that position. I told him, I want to prove, do you have anybody? He said, no. I asked him again, do you have anybody? He said, no. I said, I want to prove to you that you don't need to know anybody, but you are going to get this scholarship. That was his very first scholarship, Aquabo State Government Scholarship. I know so many of us are aware of the scholarship. The, scholar, the last scholarship that uh, our former governor did before leaving the office. Now, after we applied, a few months after, we were called to write the exam at Annex Campus, you know you, Annex Campus. During the preparation for the exam, he was always telling me, he said, Shea, I told you, this exam is just protocol so that they will not give us this scholarship. They are looking for a way to eliminate us from this scholarship. Because we knew that ideally, from our CGPA alone, from our CGPA, we should be able to get the scholarship. So if they are bringing exam, and they are bringing people that are three point something to come and apply for the exam, where we have a very strong you know, CGPA. Ah. They are looking for a way to eliminate that. That was his mindset. I told him it's not possible. Let's just write the exam. Now, when he wrote, he wrote the exam, when we, were, when we were done writing the exam, he told me ah, that he, don't, he doesn't feel he did well. But I told him that I want to prove to you today that you don't need anybody to get this scholarship. My gentleman was so shocked after three weeks that when they pasted the list of people that the government has shortlisted for this scholarship, his name was among the people that got the scholarship coupled with myself. In fact, he called me that night. It was in the middle of the night. I sent him the link to confirm his name. I've already seen his name. I didn't want to tell him that he has gotten the scholarship. I wanted him to use his eyes to see that he was given the scholarship. So I sent the link to him so that he could confirm it. When he woke up in the night and he saw it, he called me that night. I picked the call. I asked him what happened. And I said, ah, see, he has seen his name. And I asked him, do you believe that you can get things genuinely, the things that God has kept for you? From then, his mindset changes. In fact, I spoke to him a couple of days ago. He was just busy thanking me. I told him, you don't need, you don't need to thank me. You need to thank the one 
whose grace has fallen upon my life, in which you have seen your own life, because now he's doing so well, I don't need to motivate him for anything again. He's now motivating other people, inspiring them, telling them it's possible for you to get these things. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, actually, this is the moment I wanted to share this testimony. I didn't want to share it that time, but I told you it was because of your pronouncement from the altar that did that made me to come out to share this testimony. I wanted to share this testimony after I have crossed all the T's and dot all the I's, and I'm sure that indeed God has done it. I knew God was going to do it. I was so confident in my heart that God was going to do it. Now, one of the things I believe that two dimension, two outstanding dimension to my encounter with that message that day. One of the dimensions is as a champion of my family, untimely death, the siege of untimely death in my family has to be broken. That was one of the dimension of that encounter with, God, with your word, with the word of God through your mouth that day. The second was that my life should have a specific direction because I was living in outer, like in complete darkness. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was going. Yes, growing up, I had dreams. But after the challenges I was facing growing up as a child, there was no hope whatsoever of any dream. No hope at all. So now, when certain things like this begin to happen, God was shaping me. I was seeing how the life of people around me, I believe some, a couple of my colleagues are here, they could testify to this. How a young boy who could not understand the concept in his year one, who was struggling to just be an average student in year one, will rise to the ranks of even having to teach them, not just them, at some point, the entire faculty of engineering, a particular, is one of the greatest testimony I will ever see. Or sit down to imagine myself do that. Sometimes when I stand to teach them, I will not, I, I, they will not see what is on my mind, but I will imagine it, wow. So this is me talking to all these people. Like, these people are trusting me to understand this thing. It was one of the biggest testimony. Now, it is 10 years now, we've not had issue of even going to the hospital. <laughs> Talk less of somebody dying. My father, my father spent so much on the health of his children including myself, yet our life could not be preserved. He spent so much. There were a couple of times where the last of my sister that died, blood had to be transferred up to like three times. They would take it this week. After three weeks, four weeks, they say, she needs more blood. They would put again. At some point, it became a very serious issue. At some point, it became a very serious issue. But this is us living till this moment is one of the biggest, biggest thing that could happen in my life. And I will sit down to imagine it because let's imagine that we still had to go to the hospital. We will be paying the hospital bills. But God Almighty has broken the siege of untimely death in my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I can categorically say that I have a clear path that I'm pursuing in life. I have a clear goal. I have a clear direction where my life is headed. That's one of the biggest testimony I have. That's one of the biggest testimony I have. Wherever I go, I believe I will still come from time to time to discuss or to testify about the new transition or the new face of my life. Because I just believe this is one of the faces that God has opened for me. Hallelujah. Coming out not just as an average student to becoming a first class student in chemical engineering. Not just a first class student. The best in his class is one of the greatest testimony I will witness. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy, God's servant. Thank you so much. God bless you.
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, you are. the music and the background you will sing it again. The Holy Spirit is reminding me after the Holy Spirit asked me to make him the message of today and that I will not interrupt his speaking till the end. And I was shown that men will come Stand here in the middle. Young man, Emmanuel, stand there in the middle. Just want every man for this service, not the next service. I will say a young man, but all of you are young. Just want you to walk up to him, lay your hand, those who can reach him on his shoulder. And those who cannot reach him, you lay your hand on the shoulder of whoever is laying hand on his shoulder. Just on the young men. Men, come out and do that. Come out. I don't know. No, you don't need to rush. Just calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Let the first people who can touch him, don't push him, just lay hand on him. Those who cannot touch him, who cannot touch him, touch whoever is touching him. Keep singing that song. Parents who have boys, if your boy is not up to the age of coming out, you can carry your boy and come make sure your hand touches somebody who is touching this young man. Parents who have boys, if your boy cannot touch, make sure you come out with your boy, but touch somebody who is touching. I don't know what you are doing, just open your mouth and speak. This young man carries the grace to spread the grace that he has received. I just want you to, to just speak. Whatever it is that he touched, whatever it is that he touched, that has changed his story, say, I touch it also. Just, just go ahead. Say, I touch it also. I touch it also. Let the king of my heart be the shadow the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, oh, you are good, oh, you are good, oh, Inside my cells, 
testimony this young man did not share. He talked about the sister that did not know anything and he wanted to try this grace. So let me see if I can transfer this grace. And talks about how the sister has been able to pick up and pick up to the amazement of his own life. His own, he didn't remember that one, his own personal sister. So what I discover, and I'm obeying the Holy Ghost, I just said, let men connect this because you will reproduce this. The secret he has is the understanding and the belief in the call. And understanding that because he has received it, he can transfer it. I have never prayed for this man. He has never come to me to say, pray for me, I'm going through challenge. Pray for me, this is... He just caught a word. I remember the day I preached about the young goods in Ibom Hall. I still remember that day. He caught it and changed his life. Never came to me to say, pray for me. I'm having problems in school. Never, never, never. 
He has never come to save you. Man of God, he got it. When he showed me his result, perfect result, he didn't tell me he ended up being the best in his class. He didn't tell me he was teaching other engineering students in the entire. But I saw the result, I said, no, you will be the ministry and son. I was called. When he heard that it was my desire to raise champion from every family, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions had not yet begun. The church had not begun. When he heard that it was my desire, this was 2017, I cried that it is my desire that champions are will to raise champions from every family. That's the spirit of this God. This is why I fight. Blessed the day you were born. Blessed the day you were born. Blessed that you were born. Blessed the ground you will walk on until Christ calls you home. Blessed the ground your children and your children's children and your children's 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 children till the generation of Christ. Blessed be the ground. Blessed be the, the woman that you will marry. Oh, blessed be the woman you will marry. Blessed be every place, every boss you will walk under. Blessed be organizations that you walk. Blessed be organizations that will break out of your life. Industries that will break out from her. Blessed be the world you will influence. I was born for you. And I answer this call for you and for people like you. And every one of you standing here who recognizes this moment for what it is and has received. Not just you. What will come out of you? All will come out of you. I ordain you, every one of you today, with the oil of this call. And I cry to God that nobody will be in my circle. Lord, anybody in my circle who cannot catch this spirit, Lord, take that person away from me. Not in death. Resettle the person. Let nobody stay with me three years and will not catch this spirit. Whoever, Lord, please, including the closest of people to me at every level, Lord, is a covenant. Answer me in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Please go back to your seats. Go back to your seats. You are good.